G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to go back on the ground after spending a good couple of weeks, almost, or well, feels like a couple of weeks, in the air uh, with jets. So, this is practically my first tank match of patch 1.85. No, no, I have had a couple previously, grinding out the AMX-10. Um, as soon as I get a good game in the uh, AMX-50, super... So, I believe it's Subaise. I don't know how to properly pronounce it, but I'm going to call it the Superboy. Because it is a Superboy. Um, this, however, is not the AMX 5120. This is the B1 Centauro. I was extremely excited for this. Because you guys know me. Uh, you know my Leopard 1 video. Uh, if you haven't watched that, by the way, do check that out. Uh, you will know that I absolutely adore the L7 gun. And uh, this is essentially just an Italian copy of the L7 gun. Uh, and practically, same functionality. So realistically, what we're looking at is the armor um, and, the, and the chassis that the L7 gun is built around, uh, which is the Centauro. Now, as you can see, this thing is pretty damn fast. Uh, it is surprisingly quick, actually. And uh, honestly... It's it's kind of good. It's like a really really strong vehicle. It's just look at it go. Look at it absolutely just take that terrain. I've never seen an armored car take terrain like that. I believe the Centauro is the fastest tank in the game, and uh, you can really see that. It's just powering through the terrain and uh, powering all the way to my favorite sniping spot, which I didn't actually realize at the time, but uh, it turns out to be their their spawn. <laughs> that I end up shooting at. Now, what I am doing as the Centauro is I'm basically doing what I do in a Leopard 1. So, essentially, this is just a faster, more lightly armored, stabilized Leopard 1. Uh, and I'm kind of okay with that. Should it be at 7.7? I honestly have no idea. I really don't know. Um, yeah, that M56 just... Uh, just, just disappeared. Vanished. I don't feel so good, Mr. HeatFS. And, uh, yeah. There we go. Easy hull break. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Starting to fire into their spawn. You can see me take a shot at a BMP2. And all these tanks appear around me. And then that's when I realize that I'm in their spawn. Um, Gaijin, uh, I don't know what to say. Just uh, move that spawn back a little bit. You know, so I can't shoot at it from there. Because I'm basically in the middle of the map. I'm practically in the middle of the map there. And, uh, yeah. I am now taking some fire from a BMP-2 who, for some reason, just just goes. Just just runs away. Uh, and leaves me to finish the Vickers MBT, who I put a shot into the breach and uh, basically let him go. Because I decide being cruel is uh, not my thing. So I go and try and salvage the cap circle, try and get a, a little bit of a better angle on the cap and see if I can take out some, some enemies from there. The B1 is surprisingly mobile, and it's, it's really, really nice. It's just one of those things that's pleasant. And uh, in fact, I've gone and put a talisman on this thing, which I don't think I'm going to regret anytime soon. The, 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 the tank itself is just, it's just fun. It's it's nice. You you can't play it on urban maps for shit, uh, simply because of the, the the light armor. I wouldn't recommend driving around in the streets because you'll just come across things. You're just too fast for urban maps, but for maps where you can flank a little bit, it's just very very nice. There's something just nice because it can it can traverse rough terrain surprisingly well, and it's still faster than say the BMPs. Um, is this a little bit of power creep with, like, for example, the Leopard 1 not being stabilized? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I could potentially see this thing being 8-0. Potentially. Um, but then you start fighting XM1s, and then that becomes a bit of an issue. Um, I have always loved the L7, and I always will always have... Well, provided that it stays the same, I will almost always have good things to say about the L7 gun. 
having one on a stabilized platform that's extremely rap uh, rapidly moving uh, seems to traverse okay, but I mean, doesn't have neutral steering, but you put yourself in situations where you're not going to need to turn on the spot. Uh, for, for example, uh, sitting on top of a hill. Uh, that's another thing about this tank. It has shit gun depression off the front. So what you've got to do is you've got to put it off the side, and that's when you can get a little bit better gun depression. Uh, other than that, I would not recommend cresting hills or ridges or anything like that. I would certainly recommend trying to stick to uh, perhaps some sort of flat ground or some sort of hard cover behind you. One thing that I have noticed about the uh, Centauro is that it is resistant to, for example, anti-aircraft fire, which is really, really nice. I absolutely love it because you, you can come across a Dusterino and from the front it can't do anything to you because you've got just on 60 millimeters of armor and it's sloped. So if you consider the uh, uh, the angling factors, then you've actually got yourself a pretty decent vehicle. You've, uh, you've got like, you haven't got great armor. You're not going to be resistant to a BMP, but you're certainly not going to die to that uh, stray M163 very easily. You're also not going to die to small caliber ammunition uh, as you can see here, this IS-3 is just peppering away and just uh, can't really do anything against me until he reloads. He got a little bit unfortunate there, but uh, then again, so did I. I uh, get taken out by an SBD-3. That's not a bad run. That is definitely not a bad run. My only issue though, <laughs> I have no lineup. This is quite literally the first Italian tank that's been unlocked for me, and uh, Gaijin has given that to me, which is really, really nice. It's, uh, it's a fun tank. I, I don't know what to say else about the, the Santoro. It's really, really interesting, and it's just going to... It's going to turn out to be great. Trust me. The Santoro with the ERA and, and DM-33 of all shells, just to rub it into those Leopard drivers, DM-33... It's uh, it's beautiful. I I am excited for that ro for the Romo Romo. I think that's what it's called. Uh, it, it looks kind of cool to me, and it interests me quite a lot. Uh, especially considering that it gets a really really good shell. Uh, other things. Uh, you know what? Let's let's discuss the French tree for a bit. So, ah, uh, sorry, not the French. What am I saying? The Italian tree. Mamma mia. Uh, a couple of interesting vehicles are, uh, for me, the 90mm uh, Semmovente with 8 rounds of ammunition. So it's a 90mm gun with like a 10 second reload and like 6.5 degrees of gun um, rotation, turret traverse. My god, that thing is going to be garbage, but I want to play it. Because it's got something like 140 mils of pen. Let's have a look. 130 mils of pen and 158 on the upgraded shell. That, that interests me a lot, because that means you'll be able to pretty much, uh, not quite lol pen, but you'll be able to do some serious damage to KV-1Bs, and you're a battle rating lower than them, which is kind of cool, but you're limited to 8 rounds of ammunition and barely any uh, turret traverse, so it's going to be tough, but it's going to be really interesting at the same time. A couple of other things, such as the uh, entire SPAA line, let's just say that. The uh, SIDAM looks kind of cool. Up, oh, SIDAM? SIDAM. SIDAM. That thing looks kind of cool. Um, it's got 25mm cannons, and it's basically like a, an 8.0 Verblewind, which is cool. Um, other things, like pretty much the entirety of rank 5 looks really, really attractive. And, uh, of course, the uh, Fiat 6614 which is the little dinky car, let's say. Uh, these will all make for really, really good lineups overall. Uh, if you're, especially if you're into the sort of uh, tier four, tier five meta that, that I guess butters my parsnips. Um, I will say though, that uh, the Semavente line is looking kind of uh, crap. I am yet to unlock that, and I think I will spend a couple of days grinding that after I finish with rank 6 jets, because after all, I am a pilot first and a tanker second. But, for now, the Italian tree is looking good. 
And uh, Gaijin have given us a real treat for Christmas and the, the winter break to, to grind. Of course, uh, for you guys in, in Europe, it's the winter break. Here in Australia, it's the Christmas holidays and the, the summer break. But, um, yeah. The only thing that Italy is really missing, to be honest, is a, uh, is a decent close air support fighter. And uh, yes, I have got the F-84G, but anything below that is pretty subpar, to say the least. I'm really, really not confident in the uh, low-tier Reggianis to actually do anything. Ideally, what I would hope for is something like the Reggiano 2005, or something a little bit more potent. I'm not sure what there could be. Uh, I'm not sure about any Italian fighters. If anyone's got any ideas, do let me know in the comments, especially those of you who uh, regularly spend time on the forums. I'd uh, also like to see some some cast fighters. Like We've got some nice ground attackers and some nice proper fighters that can carry ordnance. Because at the moment, I'm using the IAR-80... I think it's the IAR-81. IAR. Uh, but it's... Uh... It's fat, it's heavy, I don't like it. It's 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 very, very annoying to fly. But uh you know, it carries some good ordnance. It's got uh it's got the, the, the rockets, I can't remember what they're called. And you know what? That's kinda cool. But uh I would really like to see some more cast fighters, and I think the Reggianes are gonna make up for that. And uh hopefully we get some more interesting stuff that uh has better ordinance than HVARs because, <laughs> oh boy, maybe maybe we'll get some upgraded HVARs so I can at least penetrate the top of that Doom Turtle, because you know I, I think my personal opinion if you get a direct hit with uh, like an HVAR or something like that, you should get not a kill but a crit or at least some damage. I I think that's a bit of a kick in the balls, but anyway, uh, that's pretty much. The B1 Centauro. And uh, a quick look at what I'm looking forward to in the Italian tank tree. It's uh, a really nice Christmas present from Gaijin. And uh, since this video will probably come out on the 24th, I'd, uh, I'll, I'll wish you all a Merry Christmas. I probably won't have a video for the 25th. Uh, maybe I'll just do something small. But uh, until then, take care. And I'll catch you next time.